Hello everybody. So we continue with our polymer uh, lectures and we are dealing with unit 2A of engineering chemistry. So now in this lecture we will be dealing with uh, fibers. Under this uh, uh, topic we will be dealing with uh, the characteristics of fibers, the preparation, properties and application of nylon and tetron. So both nylon and dectron are uh, considered as fibers and let us see what are the typical characteristics of fibers and what is its difference as with respect to the uh, plastics. So as uh, discussed in the previous uh, class, we dealt with uh, the characteristic of plastics and uh, plastics under plastics uh, we dealt with uh, two categories. One is thermoplastic and another is thermosets and these two different, these two uh, plastics categories of plastics are uh, based on the how the, uh, the monomeric units are arranged uh, that means what is the structural difference between that there are certain structural difference between the uh, thermoplastics and thermosets and uh, basically the uh, the forces that means uh, uh, the force of attraction or the force of binding of uh, any two monomeric units that is also different between these two classes that is thermoplastics and thermosets and uh, uh, the most uh, distinctive uh, feature that is exhibited by thermoplastics and thermosets is their behavior to heat. So in thermoplastics we know that uh, uh, on application of heat or on application of some work they, they, uh, uh, they show some distinctly different uh, features as, with res as, re as compared to the thermosets. Now in the case of thermoplastics we know that uh, uh, the on application of heat uh, they uh, soften on heating and they stiffen on uh, they become stiff on cooling whereas uh, in the case of thermosets they become very stiff on heating and that means uh, on application of heat or on application of some uh, work uh, thermoplastics they, they uh, do not undergo any chemical change or structural change so that means their uh, chemical uh, composition remains intact and they can hence be reused or remolded whereas in the case of thermosets on application of heat or, or application of some work uh, the thermosets they uh, they undergo a, a significant change in the chemical composition or the structural composition and hence they, their uh, chemical identity <coughs> diminishes or destroys uh, upon application of heat that means they cannot be reused or remolded. Now let us come to uh, the fibers. So as uh, uh, compared to the plastics, the fibers are, uh, are polymeric materials having high tensile strength. Now this, uh, because of this feature, they are used in, uh, uh, they, are, they appear as thin or long or thread like uh, polymeric materials and because of this tensile strength, they have uh, been used in various applications and uh, what are the applications we will we'll, we'll, we'll be dealing with it in the coming slides. Now uh, the basis of the high tensile strength in the case of uh, such class of polymeric materials is because of the strong covalent bonding involved. So that means uh, uh, it's the covalent bonding that is uh, the significant feature of these fibers and uh, the uh, other type of intermolecular forces that is exhibited by these fibers are dipole-dipole interaction and uh, this, is uh, this is evident in the case of dacron or terylene or uh, hydrogen bonding and which is evident in the case of nylon or spandex. Uh, examples of fibers uh, uh, which are synthetic that means they are prepared in the laboratory or they are man-made are the polyamides, the polyesters that means they are nylon which is having a polyamide linkage, the polyethylene terephthalate or terylene or dacron that is having a polyester linkage, the polyacrylonitrile that is having an acrylic uh, uh, linkage and spandex or lycra that is having that is typically elastomeric. Now what is this polyamide linkage, polyester linkage, we will be dealing with it in more details in the coming slides. Now uh, the natural fibers that we see in our day to day lives is the cotton, linen, jute, coir that is coming under the cellulose fiber, the wool or, and the silk that is coming under protein fiber, the asbestos is coming under the mineral fiber. Now this asbestos it is not organic based, it is mineral based but these are also fibers. Now let us come to some examples of fibers. So in this uh, diagram, you can see that some reactions are going on. In the first uh, reaction, we see the that nylon 6, 6, the right hand side, this represents a polymer and how you can distinguish it uh, uh, that if this is a polymer, it is represented by the N. That means the N 
uh, this is the degree of polymerization and this polymer is nothing but nylon 66 and this nylon 66 it's it's prepared from two different monomeric units the first monomeric unit is the adipic acid and this adipic acid is having uh, two coh group at the terminal carbon atom in fact it is uh, also known as the uh, one six hexanoic uh, acid a dihexanoic acid and in the second case, it is 1,6-diaminohexane. You are seeing that uh, the terminal carbon atoms have two similar functional groups, that is the NH2. So that means both these uh, 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 organic molecules are, can behave as monomers. And uh, they combine or they condense uh, via this COH group and NH2. That means the COH group uh, and the NH2 group, they combine with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a amide linkage. Now, what is amide? It is C double bond O NH. Now, this is highlighted in the red and this is nothing but a amide linkage and to the left of the amide linkage is the adipic acid uh, moiety and to the right is the 1,6-diamino uh, hexane moiety. Now, this total uh, one unit containing the amide linkage is repeated n number of times to give rise to a polyamide and this is nothing but a nylon 66. Now, why it is written as 66? Let me tell you that uh, this, uh, this amide linkage to the left is 6 carbon atoms and to the right of the amide linkage is 6 carbon atoms. Hence, the name nylon 66. And this nylon 66, it is a polyamide and it is a fiber. The second example is uh, the Kevlar. Now, this is also having an amide linkage, but uh, the monomer formed is terephthalic acid. Here, you can see that this benzene ring has two uh, COH group at the para position. So, that means this molecule will behave as a monomer. Now, let us come to 1,4-diamino benzene. Now, this benzene ring has uh, an NH2 group at the para position. So, there are two NH2 groups. So, this simple uh, organic molecule can also behave as a monomer. So, the COH group and the NH2 group, they will condense when they come together and with the, uh, with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a amide linkage. So, it is highlighted in red and to the left of the Amide linkage is the terephthalic acid moiety and to the right of the amide linkage is the 1,4-diamino benzene moiety. So, this entire unit is repeated n times to give rise to a polyamide uh, uh, molecule and this is nothing but Kevlar. Now, the third uh, example of a fiber is polyethylene terephthalate. Now, in this case, this uh, uh, the, the characteristic feature of polyethylene terephthalate is the ester linkage. Now, as I said in the last slide, these two, the nylon 6, 6 and Kevlar has a amide linkage. Whereas, in the case of polyethylene terephthalate, it, has, it is having an ester linkage. Now, how is an ester formed? We know that in uh, what we have read earlier, ester is formed by the combination of C double bond. COH and a OH group with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a ester. Now, the, the monomers involved are terephthalic acid. Now, terephthalic acid, this molecule is uh, can behave as a monomer because it has got two functional groups attached to the terminal carbon atom. Now, ethylene glycol also can behave as a monomer because it has got two functional groups that is the OH group and attached at the terminal carbon atom. So, that means these two uh, functional groups will add or combine with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a ester. To give rise to a ester. Now, this ester is uh, highlighted in a uh, in red, and this uh, entire unit is repeated n number of times to give rise to a polyester. And the name of this polymer is polyethylene terephthalate, and this is a fiber. Now, the next example is a urethane linkage and this is a polymer and uh, this uh, is uh, a urethane linkage which is formed by the combination of uh, two monomeric units that means the 4,4-diisocyanatophenylmethane. Uh, in this uh, molecule, there are isocyano uh, functional groups attached to the terminal carbon atoms and this ethylene glycol has got two functional groups uh, attached to the terminal carbon atom. Now, the uh, uh, isocyano functional group and the OH will combine or condense with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a urethane linkage which is highlighted in red. Now, this entire unit again will repeat n number of times to give rise to a polyurethane which is nothing but spandex and this is a fiber. Now, let us come to the Preparation and application of nylon. Nylon is a uh, fiber 
and it is having a polyamide linkage. So nylon are of two type. One is nylon six, another is nylon six six. So nylon six is prepared by the self condensation of epsilon amino caproic acid. Now this epsilon amino caproic acid, it is a single molecule, organic molecule having two different functional groups. Now uh, what is this epsilon? When it is uh, when these functional groups are attached to the fifth carbon atom, we say it is epsilon amino caproic acid. Amino is uh, this NH2 and caproic acid. That means the acid is this acid. Now these two uh, terminal uh, functional groups will combine with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a amide, and this unit will repeat n number of times to give rise to a nylon six. Now, nylon 6 is also formed or prepared by the ring opening of caprolactam. Now, cap, this is the uh, structural formula of caprolactam and this, uh, uh, the CO and the NH, this is the amide linkage. So, this will break uh, to give rise to a linear chain and then this CO, C, C double bond O and NH will repeat, that means this unit will repeat n number of times to give rise to nylon 6. Now nylon 6 as we have uh, discussed in the previous slide it is made by the condensation polymerization of hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid. So this we have discussed earlier so this is adipic acid having two different uh, two COH group similar COH group and this is a hexane hexamethylene diamine having two uh, similar uh, NH2 group uh, uh, at the end of the uh, carbon uh, chain. Now these two will add to give rise to a loss of uh, a water molecule and it will result in a amide linkage and this entire unit will repeat n number of times to give rise to a nylon 66 now what are the applications of nylon so nylon 6 and nylon 66 are used as fibers in making socks undergarments carpets etc now they are also used in making hair combs nylon 6 is used mainly for making tire cords Whereas nylon 66 is used in making gears, bearings, and it is also used for uh, the uh, electrical wear jacketing in order to protect the primary electrical insulation. Now let us come to the Dacron. It is a polyethylene terephthalate, also known as steriline or Dacron. So it is a polyester. That means it is having a ester type of linkage, which is highlighted in the red. And this ester type of linkage is formed by the combination of COH group in the terephthalic acid and the OH group in the ethylene glycol. So that means the monomers, the terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol, they now condense with the loss of a water molecule to give rise to a ester and this ester will repeat n number of times to give a polyester which is nothing but polyethylene terephthalate. Now what are the uses of uh, the polyethylene terephthalate? It is used for making magnetic recording tapes. It is also used for making bottles for cola drinks, fruit juices, sauces etc. It is used for making white neck jars for coffee. It is used for making films of overhead projector and the glass filled PET moldings that is the polyethylene terephthalate moldings are used for housings for toasters, coffee machines, car heaters and water meter. So that means the water bottles that you are used that you are using for drinking water is nothing but polyethylene terephthalate so it has a wide application now let us uh, uh, come to the end of this uh, lecture so that means uh, we have finished uh, what, what do you mean by plastics what do you mean by uh, fibers and these are important classes of polymers so hope you have understood the concepts now uh, I, uh, whatever doubts you are having we will be clearing them in the interactive session uh, um, so I please thank you for listening to me.